and I'm Darcy Strickland. What do you think about kids going back to school after Labor Day? Well, it's a possibility State Superintendent of Education Molly Spearman is planning for. Today, I sat down with her to talk about planning during a pandemic. I asked you for questions on Facebook and I took those questions to her office. We talked about everything from teacher pay for educators who are diagnosed with the coronavirus to student transportation challenges. Here are the answers to your questions. Keisha wants to know how do you plan for social distancing on the school buses. Some parents rely on bus transportation to get their kids to and from school. So how can a kid social distance on the bus when they already had a problem with overcrowding pre-COVID? Mm -hmm. And what about the bus drivers? Okay, great question. And here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we've worked with DHEC. In fact, some of the epidemiologists actually came out and rode the bus with us, with our engineers. Uh, to figure out how best to have the air circulating. The air conditioner will be on with a few windows down. There's some vents that we could open. The bus driver will have on a m mask. And our in expectation is that the child will get on the bus with a mask on. We'll seat from the back. Uh, a family may sit together, but otherwise it will be one child per seat unless the family gets on together. They'll move up. Nobody sits right behind the bus driver to give him some extra protection. And uh, we, so it's about a half capacity. Most buses hold, now those large buses hold about 78 students, so about the capacity of 46 to 50 students on a bus. So does that mean a later start date for school? It could, it could, months? it could. And as we are receiving the plans, I've already heard from some superintendents who are saying because of the transportation issue, it's gonna take us a little longer to get everybody there. So we may have to shorten our day, uh, the time that each child is at school. That w that's called seat time and they're gonna ask for a waiver and I will grant those waivers. I am gonna review all of the plans to make sure that there's a high quality instructional day still going on, but we will grant the waiver so that districts can operate. Eric wants to know, will the state fund classroom PPE? Will the state fund sick leave for teachers who are exposed and need to quarantine? And what actions will schools be required to take for contact tracing? exposure notification. Okay, good question. We have already purchased and the State Department of Education did this through our CARES Act funding that we get as an agency. We've purchased five masks for every teacher, custodian, bus driver, cafeteria worker, almost a half a million face masks that will be distributed so teachers can have a fresh mask to wear every day. They may have to wash them over the weekend, <laughs> but for that, uh, for that uh, material. Now, many districts are going beyond that, putting in flexiglass or uh, buying additional disinfectant. And we purchased the cleaning equipment for school buses, the disinfectant, every bus will be cleaned twice a day. Uh, the schools will follow their extra cleaning protocols. Much of this is being reimbursed from the federal and state CARES Act funding. And I'm prepared to go to the legislature when they come back in September to say we need additional reimbursement. So uh, we are helping with most of that. Some of the uh, paraphernalia will be the responsibility of the local district, but they too have received CARES Act funding which can be used for that. Does it look like school is gonna start on the first day in every district? I think most districts are looking at delaying their start. Uh, you know that the state has funded an additional five days for students to attend. We're calling them leap days. Uh, not all students, it depends on the, the districts have flexibility in how they operate that, but that will be a great time for them to bring students in in very small groups. You may not attend all five days, but you may go in for one day and be there to be assessed, to talk with your teachers, to get prepared for the upcoming year. So I'm very excited about that. So those will be tacked on to the beginning of the school. But still, again, I've heard from a number of districts, and we can give you the numbers and in, in more accurate in within a few days, but many of them are considering pushing that initial start date back to late August or even Labor Day. A new survey offers some insight into what teachers think about returning to the classroom. SC for Ed gathered information in an online poll last week. They surveyed more than 7,700 teachers across the state. 42% said they had a health condition, putting them at an increased risk for severe illness 
that they contracted COVID-19 and 65% reported at least one health condition putting them at risk. On the SC for Ed website, there is a return to school building survey. Click it, the box, and it brings up the survey with three questions about the return to school buildings.